I call this story The Disappearance of Ashley. Sometime during the night of August 16th, 1952, the small town of Ashley, Kansas ceased to exist. In the eight days leading up to the disappearance of the town and its 679 residents, bizarre and unexplained events were reported by dozens of residents in Ashley, Kansas and law enforcement from the surrounding area. The unexplained events began August 8, 1952 at 7 p.m. A resident by the name of Gabriel Johnson reported a strange sight in the sky above the town. Ashley was a small town and didn't have law enforcement, which in 1952 wasn't that uncommon for a small farming community. The nearest police station was in the nearby town of Hayes. Mr. Johnson reported a small black opening in the sky. Within the next 15 minutes, the Hayes police became overwhelmed with dozens of phone calls, all reporting the same phenomena. A decision was made to send a trooper to Ashley to investigate the matter the following morning. Shortly before 8 a.m. August 9th, Officer Alan Mace left Hayes for Ashley to investigate the reports from the night before. Officer Mace quickly radioed the Hayes police station. He reported that, despite following one road leading into Ashley, he had somehow ended up back in Hayes. Officer Mace swore the road never curved or bent in any direction. At 9.15 a.m., seven more police cars were sent to investigate the situation, and all members of the team came to the same conclusion. The road that was supposed to go into Ashley instead led back to Hayes. Meanwhile, phone calls continued to pour into the Hayes police station. The black opening in the sky continued to grow in size. All callers were advised to remain inside and not travel outside unless absolutely necessary. August 10th, 1952, 7.38 a.m., phone calls from Ashley to the Hayes police station reported that the town was in total darkness. The sun had never risen that morning. At 10.15 a.m., at the request of Hayes law enforcement, a helicopter from Topeka, Kansas flew over the region in which Ashley, Kansas stood. The helicopter reported that they never found the town. The next day, August 11th, 1952, Miss Phoebe Danielewski called into the Hayes police station, reporting that her young daughter Erica had gone missing sometime during the night. Miss Danielewski was afraid to search for her daughter in the darkness that enveloped the town. Over the course of the next 12 hours, calls began steadily pouring in describing similar situations with the children of the town. The following morning of August 12th, the situation became dire. During the middle of the night, all 217 children in the town of Ashley disappeared. A reported 421 phone calls were placed to the Hayes Police Department. Unable to be of any useful assistance, Hayes law enforcement instructed all callers to remain inside and avoid any and all attempts at finding the missing children. At 5.19 p.m. the evening of August 13th, Ashley resident Scott Luntz reported a growing distant fire to the south. According to his description, the fire seemed to turn the distant black into bright and red orange that extended high into the sky. Throughout the rest of the day, calls continued in, stating that the fire, in addition to moving north, now seemed to come out of the black sky. No fire was ever witnessed by any of the neighboring communities or law enforcement officials. Reports continued until 12.09 a.m. the morning of August 14th, the last phone call placed by a Mr. Benjamin Endicott, reporting that the fire in the sky had grown so intense that it appeared as daytime over the town. The phone call ended abruptly, and attempts to contact Mr. Endicott went unanswered. The last communication from the town of Ashley happened at 9.46 the following day, August 15th. Miss April Foster was the last resident of the town to be heard from. She called to report the fire was getting closer to the town and that, strangely, she could see figures moving through the fire even as it approached. The line went dead after four minutes. At 3.28 a.m., August 17, 1952, a magnitude 7.9 earthquake was measured by the United States Geological Survey. The earthquake itself was felt throughout the state and most of the Midwest, the epicenter determined to be directly under Ashley, Kansas. Despite their unsuccessful previous attempts, law enforcement officials returned to Ashley. Only this time, they were unprepared for what they saw. The black cloud that hung over the town and the fire that had been reported had cleared, but when they arrived at what should have been the outskirts of the farming community, they found a smoldering, burning fissure in the earth measuring 1,000 yards in length and 500 yards wide. The depth of the fissure was never determined. A statewide and local search for the missing 679 residents of Ashley, Kansas was called off by the Kansas State Government August 29, 1952, 12 days later. All 679 residents were assumed to be dead, 
The next day, August 30th, another earthquake hit. When law enforcement investigated 5.32 a.m., shortly before sunup, they reported that the fissure where Ashley stood had been closed. Rumor has it that you can still sort of visit the site if you're up around the Hayes area, but don't expect to find a crater or loose earth. After the unspeakable tragedy and never being able to locate any of the survivors, state and area officials decided the best thing to do was strip the historical records of mentions of the town. The place where Ashley, Kansas once stood was developed and eventually flooded to symbolically wash away the memories of the place and maybe quell the fire that still raged underground. Think about the next time you're in the area and go to the Cedar Bluff Reservoir. If you look too deep into the lake, you may see the lost spirits of the town folk staring back.